Thiago Mata has quickly transformed Juventus, turning the club's fortunes around while playing some sensational football. His tactical approach has revitalized the Italian giants, blending disciplined defense with fluid rotational attacking play. Juventus have started the season unbeaten, showcasing a newfound confidence and cohesion under Mata's guidance and Juventus are now emerging as serious contenders looking more formidable each and every game. Here's how you can recreate Marta's tactics in FC25. To start off the season, the new Juventus manager has deployed a side in a 4-2-3-1 system and shape. Now this structure to the side might alter and change, having likes of Cambiasso drift into the interior zones looking to combine frequently with the two deeper lying midfielders. But otherwise, Marta's shape is very fluid and you will see different various players drifting into that wider areas whilst others look to drift centrally and you will see them occupying space all over the field. When the likes of Cambiasso does drift into the interior zones of the midfield, you will see the likes of Bremer, Gatti, as well as Danilo formulate successfully a back three. And when the likes of Danilo does get forward, a solid back two is formulated with the likes of Locatelli standing just in front of them to try and shield that backline area. The Juventus team tactics for the 4-2-3-1 will maintain a build-up style set to short passing. Thiago Motta is consistent with the way that he wants his side to play, building their attacks from the back, having the goalkeeper distribute the ball further forward, whilst interchanging short passing sequences in the back line and of course in the midfield zones. A key aspect to how Motta wants his side playing is the fluid rotations that you will see occur throughout the course of your gameplay. You will see the likes of the sense backs drifting into the midfield zones, you will see the two deep lying midfielders drift out wide, and the same can be said for your wider midfielders looking to drift into the interior zones. It's all fluid, it's all rotational, it's all to try and get those short passing sequences going to try and unlock the opposition's backline areas. The defensive approach should be set to high with the line height being set to 70, as Juventus under the likes of Monta have instilled a very aggressive counter-pressing system while still trying to maintain a lot of caution when pressing higher up the field, looking to have the backline not be overly exploited from time to time with that aggressive quick direct play from the opposition. I do suspect, however, that as time progresses under Motta, we will see a much higher line implemented, and maybe even in certain games against the lesser sides, you can bump this up to around 85 or 90. Another thing that I have noticed with this Juventus system, as well as with the short passing build-up style, the double pivot is absolutely essential and also very fluid. You might see the likes of McKenney dropping deep at times to receive passes in those deeper zones, or you might see the likes of Locatelli looking to drop deep into the backline areas, collect the ball, and then progress it further forward. You will see them interchanging passes high up the field, yes, but their main role is to interchange passes between the backline and the rest of the midfield players. As we move on to the individual player roles, we'll start off at the back with the goalkeeper in Di Gregorio, and he will be set to the role of sweeper keeper with the focus being set to balance, meaning that he will be able to sweep up just in behind your high line defense, looking to break up the play from that direct attacking play launched in behind your defensive line from the opposition. And of course, he will be able to successfully play out from the back under the stress and the pressure of the opposition's pressing structure. The likes of your goalkeeper will be assisted when playing out from the back through the likes of Bremer as well as Gatti. Now, Bremer will have the role of stopper of course he's a very good stopper looking to always break up the play intercept the play make sure that the opposition aren't really getting their way with their attacking outlets in the box or in and around those defensive areas for your side and the focus for Bremer should be set to balanced whereas the likes of Gatti will have the role of ball playing defender he'll be able to collect the ball from the goalkeeper and then play those line breaking passes further forward looking to intercept the play of course higher up the field at times and then create an offensive outlet for his side both of your sense backs, however, will be very confident and composed on the ball in your box looking to play out from the backline areas. The likes of your right back in Danilo will be set to the role of fullback with the focus being left on balance. This means that he can get forward and venture high up the field if needed or if the opportunities present themselves looking to launch crosses or cutbacks into the box from that right hand space. But at the same time as well with the likes of Cambiasso drifting high up the field and we will talk about him soon enough. You want the likes of Danilo from time to time to be able to stay back and help formulate successfully a back three system. We have seen this under Mata to start off the season, and every now and then when Danilo does venture hard the field to add to the attacking elements of the side, you will see the likes of Gatti, Bremer, and Locatelli successfully formulate a kind of a, a back three type system. Whereas the likes of your left back in Cambiasso will be set to the role of false back with the focus being set to balance. This means that this will get him into the midfield zones quite a bit, looking to combine frequently with the likes of Locatelli and McKenney in that first phase of the build-up play, being very important in trying to dominate the midfield zones with Juventus. Now, at the same time, even though he will be looking to invert into the midfield zones, he will still look to frequently combine it down the left-hand side alongside the likes of Keenan Yildiz, looking to whip in crosses or cutback opportunities into the box for the attackers. Now, with this double pivot consisting of Locatelli as well as McKinney, both of them will be set to the same role, and that is deep-lying playmaker. You want to have this nice fluidity. You want them to both be able to drop quite deep at times, 
show for passes in that first phase of the builder play and be very instrumental in trying to establish the offensive platform for the rest of the side to build up off of successfully at least always looking to show for passes for either the sense backs or the goalkeeper and then progress the ball further forward now the likes of Locatelli doesn't really adventure very far forward at times you will see him sometimes on the edge of the box looking to rotate the play but mainly his role is to defend and stay back and look to sweep up just in front of the back line and therefore his focus should be set to balanced this means that he will be able to pick up those deeper areas those deeper pockets of space win the ball back rotate the play in those deeper zones and then look to progress the ball higher up the pitch either with a line breaking pass into the center forward or looking to switch the play out wide to one of the attackers Whereas the likes of Weston McKinney will be able to collect the ball in those deeper zones and then drive forward with it, looking to take on the opposition, create successful offensive overloads, high up the pitch, and also add to the attacking outlets of the side. McKinney will effectively be a very good box-to-box -box presence in the side, looking to operate on the edge of the area for the attack, whilst also looking to help back on defense and break up the opposition's attacking play. Onto the number 10 position, and Coop Miners will maintain the role of playmaker with the focus being set to roaming. Now, you can tinker with the roles for Coop Miners, allowing him to either be a playmaker or potentially a half winger, depending on how you are looking to attack the opposition. If you are looking to create overloads in the wider zones, definitely change the number 10 to a half winger, allowing him to whip in crosses from that, either that left or that right hand space. But naturally you will see Coop Miners in between the lines, looking to collect the ball in the half spaces and really link the play between the deeper line midfielders and the rest of the attackers. At times with this role implemented, you will see a 4-4-2 pressing structure formulate as Juventus either press in a 4-4-2 system or potentially a 4-1-2-1-2 system, having the two wingers press aggressively higher up the field. Onto your left and your right midfielder, the likes of Yildiz as well as Gonzalez will be set to the same role of wide playmaker with the focus being set to attack. You will see your two wider attackers look to press the opposition in those wider zones, win the ball back and then look to establish a swift transition attack. Both of these players will look to frequently combine with the central zones, looking to interchange passes and be very involved in the rotational play in the midfield areas. We have seen under Mata that the two wingers will look to take on the opposition quite a lot, looking to launch a lot of attacking positions from those wider areas of the pitch. This role will allow the two wider men to frequently break into the box and get on the end of a potential cross or a cutback, or maybe even stay on the edge of the box and facilitate a cross or a cutback opportunity for the other attackers inside the attacking zone. And then finally, for the role of Vlahovic, who will have the role of poacher with the focus being set to attack. This will allow him to break in behind, sufficiently looking to pin the shoulder of the opposition's backline, making those aggressive runs in behind. And you will see him from time to time drifting out wide, looking to get into that space, run the channel lengths, collect the ball, hold the play up, and then link it up very effectively from those wider areas of the field. But more times than not, you want to try and use Vlahovic's pace in behind to try and exploit the opposition's backline with a more direct attacking play. So when in possession of the ball, this is more or less the shape and structure that you will see for Juventus under Thiago Motta, with the likes of Vlahovic leading the line, looking to press up aggressively against the opposition, either looking to win the ball back or break him behind and create that nice direct attacking play. He can also prove to be a very physical force for the side, looking to outduel the opposition sense backs in the air and of course in the attacking zones. Just in behind him will be the likes of Tian Koopman, is looking to have a just in a round the role of the striker looking to play off the striker at times and of course link up the play very effectively looking to facilitate this Juventus offensive system. The number 10 will of course be aided by the two wide playmakers looking to facilitate crossing opportunities into the box whilst also looking to add to the aggressive pressing system. Your midfield three of McKenney, Locatelli as well as Cambiasso will be very important as already mentioned in that first phase of the builder play with Cambiasso as well as McKenney being able to add to the attacking outlets higher up the pitch from time to time with of course Locatelli looking to stay back, win the ball back, collect the ball from those deeper zones and then progress it further forward, whilst also acting as a shield for this lopsided back three system, including Danilo, Gatti, as well as Bremer. They'll of course look to break up the play, make sure that they are protecting their net as much as possible. And you will see either a back three or a back four, or even at times, like I mentioned, if Danilo does get forward, a back two system formulates in the back line of Juventus. So for the Juventus assignments, a few of you guys have been requesting for me to incorporate it into the video. So please let me know down below if this is something that you would like to see on a more consistent basis. So for the captain assignment, I have set it to Danilo or it could be the likes of Gatti as well. The left and the right free kicks will be left up to Vlahovic or potentially if on the field, Douglas Luiz, he's also very good with the ball at his feet with a dead ball situation. And the same can be said for the long free kick approach. I've left it on Coop Miners, but again, if the likes of Douglas Ruiz is on the field, he will also be set to taking them. Vlahovic has been given the responsibility of being the first penalty kick taker for the side. And again, if he's off the field, Douglas Ruiz will be that guy to step up and take the penalty himself. The left and the right corner kicks will be left up to either Coop Miners and Yildiz, or if on the field, Douglas Ruiz. 
And then finally, the corner kick instructions. The main target will be Bremer as he's that big physical force in the box at times, but I do know he is injured. So it could be the likes of Gatti or Kalulu, depending on who you're wanting, or maybe even the likes of Vlahovic, but he'll be the near post runner looking to make that near post movement with the back post being marked up by Gatti. And there you go, my dudes. That is how I would successfully go ahead and replicate and recreate Thiago Mata's Juventus tactics for FC25. I do hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you don't mind, smashing that like button down below whilst also subscribing if you are new to the channel of course we recently hit 10k we're now on the road to 15k and god does that feel good to say anyways if you would also like to join up with the brom squad gaming discord server the link will be down below in the description so go ahead click on that join up with the chat we chat everything real life football we chat everything fc25 and all that good stuff anyways we are going to hop on into some gameplay where we can discuss these tactics in further detail Okay, Tiago Motta ball versus Cagliari at home, but he does give the ball back into Danilo, who just slotted across to Vlahovic. Oh my gosh, no! Early doors, it could have been amazing. Cambiasso to make that overlap, he has done so brilliantly. Looks to square it, oh, and the defender has dealt with that. The center, oh my goodness me, Bremer is the guy. There we go, Nico Gonzalez. Oh my god, he gets taken out. He takes out Vlahovic as well. Let's let's see here. Okay, we are going to whip it in. Just trying to find something for one of the bigger boys in the box. That's a beautiful whip. Rebound. Oh, Yildiz. Go oh my days, brother. What? There we go. Out wide into Danilo. Danilo asking Gonzalez to make that run. Gonzalez, third man run. Down the right hand side. Gonzalez shaping up to take the shot on himself. He puts it on the back and then 21 minutes gone by. And Nico Gonzalez with goal number two. And we are tearing Cagliari a pass. Vlahovic making a slightly wider run of the mark. Finds Yildiz, runs onto it, and unfortunately it gets blocked away, I think, by Mina yet again. And what can he do? Finds a great ball into the likes of Gonzalez. We're just looking to stretch the play here. And look who's there. The, the overlapping right back who finds the cutback into the striker who finally gets on the score sheet. 31 minutes gone by, and it is absolutely tickets for Cagliari. Here we've got Danilo. He's defending down the right space here. He's doing a good job. He's just getting in the way of, of anything and everything. Oh my goodness me, and they've missed the target. Okay. And Bremer, he's looking just to close down the space here. Cambiasso down the left-hand side. Does a great job in defending that space. Well, that is the first half. 30 minutes gone by. We were 3-0 up. We were cruising. We've gotten different goal scorers involved. We've got players rotating into the wide zones that are supposed to be. We've got players rotating into the interior zones that are supposed to be. The tactics are working Perfect. Now let's have a look at the half time stats. Okay, so they read 61% possession in our favor to 39% for Cagliari. 3.3 expected goals we've scored three, so maybe we could have scored one or two more potentially. We've had more passes than them, we've had more tackles, we've had one corner kick, yes, and we've been very, very good. The, the, the way that the first half came to an end, we did concede the ball a little bit more, so maybe the possession could have been a bit higher. I was a bit careless and reckless, I was just trying to get another goal just before the break. But in the second half, we will be focusing on the rotations, the build-up play, the structure, um, maybe scoring a goal or two in the second half. So a large portion of our position has been just on the edge of the opposition's box, looking to rotate the play. The likes of Gonzalez, Coop Miners, and sometimes Yildiz, but mainly the center forward in Vlahovic. They've been interchanging quite nicely, and we've also seen the likes of McKinney getting up the field and looking to add to the passing sequences as well. Whereas for them... A lot of their attacks have come down the left-hand side, and I must say Danilo, apart from the one instance, he's done very well in just being able to lock down that right-hand side, their left attacking space. And of course, in the central zones, they have maintained the ball, but we've been very good with just counter-pressing them in the, the midfield areas, or even out wide, winning the ball back and then looking to transition very quickly. Well, there, well done there by Cambias, who's looking to drive forward with it now. Plays a great pass into Coop Miners, Coop Miners into Locatelli, Locatelli into Vlahovic, Vlahovic finds the return pass into Cambiasso, who had continued his run. There's nobody to support him. He's going to square it into the box. Oh my God. Cambiasso's run though. That was made all from Cambiasso. Okay, Vlahovic set to take it and he should definitely put in the back of the net. There we go. Great save from Di Gregorio. Oh my days. Okay, look at that. Locatelli first phase of the builder play. Looks to play a pass further forward. Just quick build up play, quick transitions. That that's what we want to try and create right now. Frame is there yet again. That is just that is just pure filth. That is just pure filth. And I've missed the targets. Into Danilo. What can Danilo do here? He's found a great pass. 
Vlahovic takes a great touch up in the air, puts it in the back of the net, and it's 5-0 to Juventus. And now Cagliari. Can they maybe get a goal here? Di Gregorio is there to close down the space. That's why he's on sweeper keeper. That is exactly why he's on sweeper keeper. Can they maybe nick a goal? I don't want them to get a goal, though. I don't want them to get a goal. Damn it! They got a goal. And there you go, people. A 5-1, unfortunately. A 5-1 drubbing of Cagliari. Vlahovic, a hat-trick for him. Of course, he scored the penalty and then got the tap-in and then banged one in for his third. So the stats in the second half did go down ever so slightly, dropping from 61% possession to 55. Cagliari did come back into the game a fair amount, especially after we had scored goal number five. I think the boys just took their foot off the gas, but an expected goals of 5.3. We ended up scoring five, so maybe we could have scored six or seven, or maybe even eight. Who knows? But we had 100, almost 130 passes compared to just 87. 18 tackles to 10. Very active, proactive when out of possession for the ball, looking to win the ball back. The backline stepping up and doing their job. The role of stopper plus plus for Bremer is absolutely sensational. But yes, those are the stats at full time. I do hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And just one more time, smash that like button down below. And I will see you guys with the next video soon enough. Peace.